On the Build Show today, we're talking air tightness. I'm visiting with my friend Doug Cameron over here at ESS Design Build. And if you remember this house that Doug's built, this is where we filmed Zip 2.0. Now, Doug's the pioneer of this system where he basically uses their liquid flash on almost all the seams and joints, all the penetrations on the outside of the house. And in the past has made a very airtight shell. And so in the build show today, we're gonna to talk about this particular house. Now this house, when Doug first tested it, we had a little bit of a conundrum as to why it wasn't testing as tight. Doug, give us the background here. Well, Matt, thank you again. Um, so we knew that the score was kind of a big deal because of Matt's previous videos that he did with us. There was a little <laughs> bit of pressure. So we were trying to come through like the champions that we feel like we are. And um, so we were super bummed out with that blower door score. I mean, it was not super high or anything, but it wasn't what we're typically doing. So Okay, so time out for one mm -hmm. sec, Doug. So blower door score, if you're not familiar with this, <laughs> we use a third party company, in fact, Positive Energy here in Austin. They take out the front door in the house. They pressurize the house as if you're blowing up a balloon and what they're doing is they're trying to figure out how much air is leaking through the envelope and of course as a builder that's a really good measure for performance because air leakage translates into loss into an increased heating or cooling load in the house and so Doug and I over the years have really tried to get our houses as tight as possible now some of you may know the passive house standards that house uh, standard means that we're trying to get to 0.6 ACH 50, that's 0.6 air changes per hour at the blower door pressurizing the house to 50 pascals, roughly equivalent to a 20 mile per, mile per hour wind. And Doug, when you first tested this house, what blower door score were you, were you coming up with? We were coming up in the high ones, is okay. really what we were coming up with. And uh, we were so used to blowing, uh, having our blower door scores be sub one. I mean, mm -hmm. we've done this year in, year out, home after home after home. So, um, you know, yeah, I was kind of beating my head against the wall. And then we started to diagnose everything as best mm -hmm. we could. We had Sean's help from Positive Energy. We had yep. the young guys on our team using some DIY blower doors. I like the and, DIY blower door, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Very cool system. You basically took the front door out, put a one inch piece of rigid, with a hole for your uh, carpet dryer fan. That's right. Took a 1200 CFM carpet dryer fan and depressurized the house as kind of a cheap way to, uh, to test. And then I saw your guys using a smoke pen on the job site. What are the methods did you try and use to try and figure out where that leakage was coming well, from? That's right. So, so basically in between the actual stops of Sean, who has a real blower door that he can turn up to maximum pressure, where really you can just listen to the mm -hmm. sound of air coming through. Um, we used that smoke stent, that, that smoke pen, mm -hmm. and we walked around the entire envelope time after time after time, and we found leaks in places such as double LVLs that were going out to structural fascia yep. that we just didn't really think to to seal yep. and then we had an exterior patio that really we didn't detail as well as we should have we should have compartmentalized it a little bit more separated it and segmented it so that we can control the air and yeah. control our situation yeah. lastly it came down to our windows and doors yeah that's the real story here guys i think which which is really interesting and let me bring sean in uh from positive energy if you guys don't know sean harris sean's done a lot of testing for both doug and i over the years uh through positive energy and uh, Sean, what's the story on the windows and doors in this house? Tell us some of the numbers that you found in testing here. Yeah, so uh, our final blower door ended up being about 420 CFM of leakage. So that's uh, 0.75 ACH 50, Ooh, that's which tight. is really great. That's really good. Uh, but that, however, yeah, however, that number, there's a caveat there that we taped up all the windows and doors to get that number. Yeah. So once we removed all of the tape, it pretty much doubled the leakage of the house. Which doubling the leakage of the house when you're so tight to begin with, is okay, but uh, it just goes to show, you know, you really need to watch those windows and doors on how leaky they are because it contributes to a lot of the infiltration that's happening. And Sean, were you worried, are we worried about meaning code at those numbers? What are we talking about for code numbers here? Yeah, so uh, we started out at the 0.75, we took off the tape and we're now at 1.5, so doubled, doubled the leakage. But in our climate zone, we only need to achieve a five air change per hour. So that means that we're still two thirds below code, which is, yeah. is still great. Just and if we were building this house in Vermont or Minnesota in a really cold climate, what's the number we're trying to hit up there? Uh, yeah, so that's three ACH 50, so that means we'd be 50% of code. Yeah, so we're still, we're still really low numbers here. Still mm -hmm. Doug and his crew did a great job. But I think there is an interesting, there's really kind of two takeaways, Doug, if, if you'll permit me. Uh, number one, Doug and his crew did a really good detailed job on the exterior, and I think this really proves his ZIP 2.0 system that Doug's pioneered to show, look, you can get a really tight shell 
using those details, using liquid flash where the framing meets the foundation, uh, where the framing on the walls meets the roof line. You guys did a great job detailing that. All of your seams, all of your penetrations, your, your crew does a really tight job with that. And I think this really proves that that system's good. But secondly, the big takeaway for me in kind of seeing what you guys have done here is that, gosh, if you're going for a really high performance house, you got to pay attention to those windows and doors. Would you agree, Doug? Absolutely, Matt. I would say that uh, on, on round two of, or on my next home that, I, that I'm getting into when we're looking at the window and door package, usually I get involved during that time period. I really want to personally evaluate every single metric slash I want to really get my hands and touch and feel all the gaskets, yeah. look at how they work. Yeah. And I really want to feel good that I am, I am basically um, working with something that, that coincides with my system and yeah. my best practices and uh, you know my overall project goals. Yeah, and we're not trying to slam the manufacturer on this particular job. Uh, I think they make a good product. Um, but if we're going for that super tight house, a couple things we wanna do. We wanna evaluate those window and doors. We wanna consider maybe moving away from sliders. I think mm -hmm. you found that you sl your sliders were fairly leaky. In fact, one of the sliders, you can even hear the wind kind of whistling through when Sean's blower door was kicked up uh, right. to high mode. So, you know, that's, there's two big takeaways. Like I said, that zip system, it really works. You can get a very airtight house, but pay attention to those windows and doors. And I think it's gonna be interesting to see um, what you and I do in the future, whether we end up going to triple glaze, whether we go to some of the European brands in the future, whether we can move to more casement style windows where we can really lock down those windows against gaskets. Um, Cause you and I both are looking to get houses that are always in that sub one ACH 50. Doug, thank you so much, man. Anything My else pleasure. that uh, you wanted to mention before we close this out? You know, I would. So um, one of the things that I am very proud of on this project, and you may be able to catch it in the background, is our attic assembly. So oh, we, yeah, we are right. doing a sealed envelope, um, you know, known as a conditioned attic or a sealed attic, mm -hmm. however you want to term it or phrase it. And for years, everyone has kind of thought that you had to do spray foam when you're doing that application. Yeah. And uh, Joe Stebrook tickled my fancy and told me everything I wanted to hear at the Hot Human Climate Conference about mm -hmm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just in hog heaven, ran with, ran with that information, um, started immediately doing my my building envelopes, sand spray foam. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess what, guys? I've been able to achieve the same scores without spray foam. That's right. Just simply by sealing everything from the outside. You block it, you caulk it, you seal it, you're good. And then on the inside here, he's got a bib system. So he's got fiberglass blown in, basically a custom fiberglass bat made in each cavity. If you look at this roof behind us, he's got a series of flat roofs. So he coordinated really well with the architect over here. Uh, by the way, big shout out to uh, Mark Odom Studios. Beautiful architecture on this house, did a great job. Uh, Doug, I'm really proud of you, man. You are an incredible builder. You're doing some great stuff. Really proud of your career, too, for tightening this house down. Sean, thank you for your partnership as well. I think the other part of the story here is you got to find a good guy like Sean in your, in your area who can partner with you. You can come in and blow a door early. You notice to hear that we're not even drywalled and Doug's blower dooring already to make sure how tight it is because a lot of this he wouldn't have necessarily been able to tighten down later. And to do it pre-drywall means that he can bring that score down and really achieve what he's looking for and, and find out where the problems were as well. Guys, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.